pastorally this morning, um, I felt very led um, to take a moment and to recognize um, some of what has been going on in our country this week. Like you, I'm sure, know about and saw for yourself, I saw this week, um, now I wish I hadn't seen, but the horrific video of the killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis and like you, I have um, just gone between heartbreak, confusion, sorrow, frustration, sadness, questions, and at times, yes, hope. And this morning, I just want to lead us as a church family and us as a community to a time of prayer um, for the things that we have experienced uh, together as Americans uh, in this past few days. I'll say at the onset here that um, I know that I'm white. <laughs> I know that that makes me um, perhaps not the best messenger here, um, but I can't help that. I don't feel guilty for that. But I also know that in ways um, it does make me privileged and it does inhibit my understanding. I also know that I am not an expert on these things. Um, I am a broken man myself. I come from a broken family. Um, we all are broken people, but I myself am very keenly aware that I am not an expert or necessarily even the perfect model uh, to be speaking to you today, but I am a pastor, and I do care very much about God's word, about the heart of God, and about you, our church family, and you, our community in this time. And I speak today with humility and also just as a messenger of the gospel. And I also don't speak politically. I have zero political agenda as a church. I am thankful for the separation of church and state, the freedom that we have in this country uh, as a church. Um, and I have led, if you know me, you know this, I have led our church the entire time I have been pastor of our church to, to not be a political church. Um, we are a church that desires above all just to be a gospel church and to put nothing in the way of people finding relationship with Jesus. So this, what I'm saying today, is not meant to be political, but I really believe everything that I have felt this week and everything that I want to do together as a church right now, as I lead you uh, to consider this and to pray, uh, is just about, it's just about the gospel. I was thinking this past week, as I saw the video um, of what happened in Minneapolis, the reason I'm saying this is a gospel issue is, is church family. Just this past week, I taught a message at the start of this series on identity on Imago Day. I focused our attention on the fact that all of us, every single one of us, is created. We, as humans, are distinct among creation. We are image bearers of God. We are the beautiful and unique creation of God, and he made each and every one of us to display his image. And because all of us are made in his image, I'm talking from the beginning of life to the end of life. I'm talking all human beings. I'm talking male and female. Every race, every color, every age, all of us are sacred beings that God values and God loves. All of us created in the Imago Dei, in the image of God. And the reality is that the things that 
happening right now, the protests that are happening are, are trying to get our attention. We've got people in our communities of color who are trying to get our attention and are saying to us, we also are made in the image of God, equally worthy of dignity and respect as any other. And this is a, this is a gospel issue. This is a gospel issue. And together, right now as a church, I really believe that we can and should do more at this moment. I believe this is a pivotal moment and I believe God is calling us to do more, to say that the things that we are concerned about as the people of God relate to these very relevant issues that are going on right now in our country and we can stand with our brothers and sisters of all races, but especially right now in America, our African American, our black community, and affirming, yes, that they are also worthy of equal dignity and respect as the image bearers of God and equal treatment personally and as citizens of our country. I was thinking about what we can do as a church family. And I began to think about the book of Nehemiah. So many of the feelings this week, I was trying to ask God, God, what is it that you want me to do? What is it that you would want our church to do in this moment? And the reality is I, I was led back to think about Nehemiah because there in the book of Nehemiah, I believe we see what it looks like to be people of God in the midst of brokenness. This is not teaching for the day, this is a time of prayer, but for the time of prayer, uh, I want to point out four things that I, I really believe that we see with Nehemiah um, that we can apply for ourselves in this current time. And this is for all of us. We've got people in our church of many ethnicities. I'm not just speaking uh, to one race here, I'm speaking to all of us together. What can we do? The first thing that happened with Nehemiah is when he got news that the walls of Jerusalem had been broken down and destroyed, that the city was left in ruins as he, he was broken. And that's the first thing I believe that God would have us to be is broken. If you're frustrated right now that people should just get back to normal, this cop was arrested, why can't people just get over it? I think, you're, you're, well, I think we've got to do a better job of listening, listening to why this particular moment hurts so bad because it's not just about this moment this week, it's about moments that our brothers and sisters of color in this country have experienced like this, not just this week, but this month and this year and for years to come. In fact, it goes back hundreds of years all the way back to the Jim Crow era and to the time of slavery in our country. There is deep brokenness that exists in the hearts of people and often in the culture and systems of our land and God calls us to be broken. And just like with Nehemiah, I really believe our first step as we get the news, it is okay to, to weep, it is okay just to be sad and to mourn. And I believe right now as a church, God calls us like Nehemiah to, to, be, to be broken. I wanna say I thank God for law enforcement. I know the vast majority of law enforcement officers are good people and they desire, I really believe, to do what they do in justice to uphold dignity and integrity in their work. But I also know, we also have to recognize that there are many who have not done that. There are many who abuse their authority and bring unnecessary harm to people that they're called to protect. And for that reason, we can be broken. We can be broken with our minority brothers and sisters. We can be broken with the family of George Floyd. We can be broken 
over inequitable distributions of justice. Number one, we could be broken. Number two, I really believe um, that there's something to learn with Nehemiah, that not only did he start with brokenness, I mean, when he got the news, he just wept, but his brokenness led him, number two, to prayer. And not just like prayer, like, oh yes, we, we go through the ritual of prayer like we do before a meal or before, you know, those times where we just know that we ought to pray. No, there's a level of brokenness that should lead us to our knees, to a heartfelt cry to God for restoration. And I believe all of us as the people of God right now, there are many leaders in our country who today are calling for a day of prayer. Today is Pentecost Sunday. It's the day that we mark the time after the ascension of Jesus that the Holy Spirit was given upon the church, filled them with the Spirit, and, and the Spirit came as they were praying. We remember. As we seek God, God responds. And I believe now is a time, maybe more than ever, that we should get on our knees and we should pray. We should pray, we should pray, we should pray. Throughout the Bible, the Bible speaks to matters of justice and human dignity. We should pray that every person in our country, that every one of us would have hearts that are changed, to have a fear of God. If we could have a fear of God in this country, we might be able to have respect and to treat others with dignity, respect for others. Seeing people made in the image of God, loving. Isn't this the most basic command that we would love the Lord with all of our heart and love others as he has loved us? Can we just pray that God would do something in our time to bring a revival of people's relationship with him and a revival of love, love for him and love for others? And that we could together pray for our local leaders and our state leaders and our national leaders as they seek justice. Pray that they would act quickly. Pray that they would be diligent and serious about taking care of these situations and making sure that injustices come to an end. We can pray. Nehemiah got on his knees after his, his broken and he cried out to the Lord for restoration. And I believe some of us ought to turn off the news, ought to stop just talking about it with one another, and the first thing we ought to do in this time is get on our faces and pray for God to bring a change. Third, not just that Nehemiah was broken and not just that he went to his knees to cry out for restoration, but he was actually willing, Nehemiah was willing to get involved. If you know the story of Nehemiah in chapter one and into chapter two, what we see is after his time of prayer, he began to realize that it wasn't just enough to talk about the fact that things needed to change, to pray for things to change, but he himself needed to get involved and help things to change. He needed to be willing. He needed himself to be willing for God to use him to be a part of the change that was needed. And in fact, with great courage, Nehemiah stepped forward. He stepped forward to make a request of the leader to allow him to be a part. And I really believe that many of us today, not many of us, all of us today, this is our time to not just talk about it among ourselves, to not just hope that through time change will be inevitable, to not just pray in our private closet, but to do what we can do to step forward and to give voice to the very heart of God for all people in our community. Martin Luther King, when he was in the Birmingham jail, said to this, when he looks up at the steeples in the land over and over again, he's found himself asking, where are the people of God? Who is their God? Where were their voices when the lips of Governor Barnett dripped with the words of interposition and nullification? Where were they when Governor Wallace gave clarion call for defiance and hatred? Where were their voices of support when the bruised and weary Negro men and women decided to rise from the dark dungeons of complacency to the bright hills of creative protest? Dr. King looked at the churches of the land and he wondered in a time where many churches were just silent he helped us recognize that silence is speaking. And we ought not to be silent about the things that break God's heart. We ought to raise our voice and to do what we can do.
We cannot remain silent when our brothers and sisters, our friends, people in this community of Memphis that we seek to win for Christ are mistreated or abused or killed unnecessarily. And I'm wondering, I'm praying, oh God, would you help me? This week, friends, I, I have found courage. I have never, ever addressed anything like this so directly here in our church in my type of ministry, even personally in conversations with friends. But this week, I have been praying like Nehemiah, oh God, would you help me to just try to be willing, more willing than I ever have been. He said, I could stand with you and stand with those who you love. God calls us all throughout scripture to protect the vulnerable. The Bible condemns injustice and misuse of authority and force. He calls us to, to move in love for others and care for their needs and grief with brokenness and in work for the well-being of our neighbors. He calls us to do more than just talk, than just pray, than just feel. He calls us to be involved. And Nehemiah got it and he stepped forward. Brokenness, prayer, willingness. And the last thing that I see, and then I'm just gonna give space for prayer for you, right? Wherever you are right now, whether you're by yourself or with people, we're just gonna pray after I finish this. But the last thing I wanted to point out as I'm leading us toward a time of prayer today is that Nehemiah, after he expressed willingness, when he got to Jerusalem, after the king granted his request, the first thing that he did was he actually went and he surveyed the brokenness in order that he might understand what it was that needed to be done. And I wanna tell you, I think one of the best places for us to start right now, I think the reason, yes, we condemned, we condemn acts of violence in protests, okay? But the reality is what we've got to understand is why are people protesting so much at this moment? We've got a survey together as a church, as the people of God, what is going on right now? This is our moment to listen, to, to, to go out and look and to seek to understand the extent of brokenness that we experience right now. I myself, I'm trying to figure this out. I wanna do a better job tomorrow. I'm gonna be with a friend, Steve Johnson, a black pastor here in our community that I've grown a friendship with. He's gonna be on a podcast with me. I'm just gonna sit and listen to try to learn from him. And hopefully you can listen to that too and just learn. I watched a video yesterday that broke my heart of some of our black brothers and sisters in our country explaining to their kids, my kids age of how to act when they get pulled over by the police. I gotta do a better job. It broke my heart. Never never even thought about that. I've never had to think about that, nor teach my kids about that. I gotta do a better job listening and learning, surveying the brokenness. I've gotta understand more about racial disparities and wealth and, and poverty and in our prison systems and with childbirth and graduation. I've gotta do a better job understanding my white privilege. Just even recognizing that my skin does not, is not one of the causes of my struggles. I've got to do a better job understanding what is it that we can do individually and corporately here in our community to, to, to take a stand with God and with those who he loves in our church and our community and our country and beyond. And I know these issues of racism have been around forever and it's more than just our country. We have a global perspective here at our church and I have been to many countries where racism looks all kinds of different ways. But I know here in our community, this is our time. This is our time to be broken. This is our time to pray. This is our time to be willing. And this is our time to survey and do what we can to learn. So this moment right now, I'm just inviting you. I'm calling you right now. I just want you to pray. Whether you're by yourself right now at home or with your family or with a group, I just, we're just going to give some space. And I'm just asking us to pray, to come together and to pray. Pray as the Spirit of God leads you. I really believe that if we take the posture of Nehemiah, that God will allow us to be an even stronger 
gospel-centered church for this community that we love so much. Let's pray together right now for these things.